So I'm going to do it a little different this time. I'm going to give a little speech, um, impromptu as I usually do. Then I'm going to hit you with um, some martial arts, and then I'm going to finish uh, with a poem. So basically, I've had somebody um, say that they're going to mention uh, my martial arts challenge, my victory. Um, going to mention you know, me exposing the perp as well. Um, also, I should hit you real quickly with this picture of the CJ Mack video that shows you over two years ago I was talking about gang stalking. So there's an upcoming debate um, on some website where they're going to talk about whether gang stalking can be exposed. I'm going to talk about that. Um, so basically, gang stalking can be exposed on, on a small level. There's always the people striving to be normal. Most of us are going to find that people striving to be normal are your biggest enemies. And their beliefs and their misconceptions and the people who feed into them. We live in a society where people start charities and pay themselves, you know, upwards of 200000 sometimes $300,000 a year just to uh, administer the charity as it came out in the news for charities are being sued for $150 million or something for this practice of abusing the funds, you know, mismanagement. Which is quite sad. And recently I've challenged the gang stalkers um, publicly for, you know, I don't know, maybe 10th plus time in my videos. They didn't show up, needless to say. Instead, people um, drove by, you know, waving their out, hands out the window, you know, doing cowardly acts, despicable acts. This also ties into the OMGs, or the Organized Motorcycle Gangs. You hear, you hear about the shooting in Waco, Texas. Waco, Texas, hmm. Interesting that it happened there. Um, there's, there's a feud between biker gangs and how they have a code of silence. And most people don't realize how this ties into the military and how it ties into gang stalking. I believe it was the Bandinos um, motorcycle gang who got their colors from the Marines. So you see how this is all tied together. And the Hells Angels started from, uh, I believe it was pilots in World War II or World War I, something like that. And they started off making their bikes um, in a similar way to some plane or something, you know. If I care, I'll put it in the comments. But it all ties into the military industrial complex, which ties into spreading Western ideas, which ties into controls, which ties into Freemasonry. I just watched a video about Robin Hood, excuse me, Robin Hood movie. And in it, they talk about Robin Hood's dad was a stonemason. In this version, there's many versions of Robin Hood. And they say that um, he stood for liberty. And one of the mottos was turning lambs into lions so it makes they're trying to make it seem like the masons were going against the crown and we're going against you know the crown's version of religion because the king in the movie says that god ordained me and i don't have to respect the agreement that he made for the englishmen to fight the french in the movie so they're trying to make it seem like the masons are the good guys and that they're not connected to the crown which is quite absurd of course, there is an element of them making, leading you to believe that. It's really about them being in power and bringing in a new world order. You know, they're ab abolishing the ideas of royal families being in charge and bringing in a world government, which is supposedly other people. But it's not truly other people because the people will be under mind control. They will think the ideas are theirs. They will think, you know, it is what is in their best interest, what they want, but it's what has been organized um, what has been programmed into them to want and there's gonna be many events that lead them to that conclusion there's gonna be political social economic uprisings and circumstances which lead them to that conclusion pretty much the way we have it today except for slightly more dramatic we're gonna see mental health expanding um, in an effort to control spirituality even more taking a more aggressive stance on it 
we're going to see, you know, them using all the means they've had to a greater extent. It is quite sad, these irredeemable scoundrels and what they're up to, you know. It's quite sad. I, I predict they will be lamenting before their soul is thrown into the great abyss. I predict that their arguments will continue to be um, what they have been, which is because you don't want to admit that your religion is true, excuse me, isn't true, that we all have to suffer. When in reality, it's the reverse. It's because they don't want to admit that their religions aren't true, that we all have to suffer. Their Babylonian religions, their secret um, rituals and ceremonies and ceremonial burials and the religious implications of them, their, their faith in psychiatry, their faith in um, non-Christian religions, non-Abrahamic religions, if you will. Because they don't want to admit that the things that the Bible are talking about are absolutely correct. What the Bible defines as morality is absolutely correct. Um, we all have to suffer. Because they don't want to admit that homosexuality is a sickness. And you can see, when you look at most homosexuals, you can see in their face that they're sick. Now, some of them will say this is a result of the stigma that society has for homosexuality. But look at black people, okay? Do they have that same kind of look to them? You know, some black people don't look bothered at all. They're comfortable. They're they're used to it, you know. They're like, yeah, I'm black. Yeah, I'm stigmatized, you know. But I'm not, I don't have that weird twisted look on my face. I don't have that sick look on my face. A lot of homosexuals look sick. Even the most proper, even lawyers and the most well-spoken of them look sick in the head. If you look at gay rallies, you know. It's like they are embracing the sickness. They're dressing in weird ways, weird haircuts, weird rainbow earrings and rainbow flags. And everything they do is sick and twisted. And so, you know, instead of, instead of them admitting what I've proven beyond any doubt through my research, through my arguments, through my really common sense, through my superior logic, instead of them admitting this, we all have to suffer. So we all have to suffer because you people are sick and don't want to admit that while you define what sickness is, which is something you have no idea about. You know, I'm the top martial artist. None of you are. How can you say that you know better about human nature than I do? It's a joke. You can't be the top martial artist without outsmarting every one of your opponents. Is training better than they are, training more effectively than they are, than they do, understanding human nature better than they do because whether or not you want to admit it not only do i have to understand human nature but i have to understand it in real time in real time fast forwarded if you will split second decisions split second decisions to determine whether i win or i lose so because you don't want to admit that i'm the top martial artist and i know human nature better than you do we all have to suffer because you don't want to admit that feminists are a bunch of baby killing um secret society controlled family destroying filth we all have to suffer because you don't want to admit that the morals and the principles behind the three abrahamic religions are absolutely correct we all have to suffer it doesn't matter if the whole bible is just a story and none of it ever happened the moral of the story is absolutely correct. The morals, the key points. So because you don't want to admit that, we all have to suffer. And you're going to try to flip it and reverse it and say, oh, because you don't want to admit that your religion isn't true. But to anybody with common sense, to the insightful viewer, I have absolutely proven my point beyond any doubt. The next time you're out, look at a, the average black person. Study them carefully. Study their mannerisms. Study their demeanor. Study their behavior. Then look at the average homosexual and tell me there isn't a distinct difference. Both are quote-unquote stigmatized, marginalized by society, but only one of them is completely sick almost every time, 99% of the time, and that is the homosexual. And by default, since feminism is led by lesbians, basically homosexuals, and they're teamed up with homosexuals, what happens when you're making the same argument as a bunch of people who are sick and you are led by a bunch of people who are sick? 
You have taken on the characteristics of sickness, whether you are or not. Your argument is one that is sick, and you are the ones who are making everyone suffer. Not people like me. Thank you. vital that my message reach the streets. Sometimes what hinders you and your progress is others' beliefs. With beliefs, there's usually a system. Don't allow Babylon to make you a victim. I'm finished with them. I'm done. Let the revolution come. I did the math, and what was the sum? The sum was the gun, a gun and a sword. Victory was in my words, of course. Speaking of the course, what is the path that you're on? The blind led by the wrong. Whether or not they can see, it doesn't mean a thing. When what they have planned for us is everyone's nightmares, no one's dream. The way the devil schemed, it was what I always seen. Their psychological operation for years. The evil starts between their ears. Why couldn't you hear my precious peers? You rather guzzle beers and watch TV. Why didn't you just listen to me? Then you would see. Then you would believe. Then we could achieve. Then the demons would die, dissipate, and leave. That's why it must be war. 